Hi there, my name is Matt Williams and I'm the DevOps evangelist here at Datadog. In this video, I want to show you the metrics that we are able to collect from Docker um, and from all of your Docker containers. And this is after you tweak the docker.yaml file for your Docker container or for your uh, Datadog container. So um, at the top, this is a custom dashboard I just created. Um, at the top, I can see I've got a metric for containers running and containers stopped. And so I'm showing this in uh, a top 10 or top, uh, um, top values list. And it's showing me the, um, the hosts, uh, the Docker machines that are available that are running uh, containers and how many containers are they running each. So my Docker Nginx demo machine um, is running 24. And Knights of the Round is running 15. Uh, MS Docker Demo is running 9, and so forth. Uh, then I have the same kind of uh, um, metrics being used, uh, Docker containers running. And I can see the number here uh, in a slightly different format, looking at, um, uh, I believe it's by container image or by image used. Uh, and next is uh, containers stopped over the course of the last day. Now below that, I can see uh, user and system CPU, and these are Docker CPU user and Docker CPU system. And in the back here are events, and I've set those up to be the uh, create uh, events uh, anytime a new container is created. Next to that, there I've got Docker disk size. Um, and so this is just showing me how much disk is uh, allocated to my different containers, and it's uh, summed it up to uh, you know so that all of them are added up together. Then I've got images and intermediate images available. Uh, so there's 97 images available across my different Docker hosts, uh, and then 634 intermediate images as well. Uh, inactive and inactive um, file and anonymous memory. So inactive file memory and active file uh, memory, and then uh, inactive anonymous memory and active anonymous memory. Um, and then uh, as well as unaffectable and mapped file memory. And so you can see those here. I've actually added my little legend below so that you can see what color is which. And a lot of them are uh, really low, so it's hard to distinguish uh, them. And then I've got my cache and resident set size, so Docker mem cache and Docker mem RSS. And for Docker mem RSS, I actually split it out so I can see which uh, contain, actually no, which host uh, which is this? This is uh, which container uh, has the largest resident set size. So this uh, local discourse uh, has the largest resident set size, whereas uh, my Docker uh, agent um, has uh, uh, 54 meg. Um, my Docker demo web uh, latest version is 22 meg. And then down at the bottom, I've got uh, some page fault and major uh, page fault. Uh, as well as page in from disk and page out to disk. Uh, and those are what are listed right here. Okay, so that might be, that might actually be a few more than what you see. So actually, if I go to metric summary, I see about 19 metrics. Let's yeah, 19 uh, metrics that talk about Docker. And you might actually be seeing closer to eight. So let me bring up the preview. This is a screenshot I took a little while ago. And uh, this is the way it is normally when you first set up the Docker integration. But there are a few um, uh, metrics that are optional. And it really depends on which version of Docker you're running. And if you're running a more recent version that seems to work, uh, with some of the older versions of, of Docker, um, some of the metrics weren't uh, functional uh, for whatever reason. So let's go back to my um, browser and take a look at uh, docker.py. This is in the checks directory on the agent. Again, the agent is totally open source, so you can check it out on GitHub. And down uh, around line 28, we can see that there are a bunch of optional metrics. Um, and that's where this active anonymous and active file and inactive anonymous and inactive file, map file and all the page fault um, uh, stats are available. So in order to turn this on, we need to go into the YAML file 
and uh, just uncomment, basically uncomment a few things or set them to true. Uh, one of the things that's interesting to do is tag by command. Um, so whatever, you know, with all of your Docker containers, you can run a command at the end, and that's what basically keeps them running. And you can make that command a tag. Uh, I'm not sure why we don't turn that on by default because I think it's pretty cool. Um, but then uh, scroll down and uh, we can exclude containers or include containers based on uh, maybe the image or tags that are used. Uh, collect events defaults to true, so I don't need to change that. But I can collect container size. Um, so that was the disk size. Uh, so I, I actually enabled that or set it to true and uncommented it. And then collect all metrics. Uh, that's what collects all those optional metrics. So uncomment and set it to true. Now to do that for my Docker container, uh, here's what I actually did. Um, here's my Docker file for my uh, Datadog agent uh, container. And uh, what I've done here is do an app get uh, and install Vim just in case I wanted to uh, tweak it on the container because the uh, Datadog container normally does not include any sort of editor. Uh, and then I'm copying my um, Datadog configuration file. Um, you know, I made the tweaks there rather than uh, making them um, in this Docker file. Uh, and I've also uh, made changes to the Nginx YAML, which I'm just copying over. But, uh, and then finally uh, adding my API key at the end of my Datadog configuration file. But rather than doing going that process, I decided to use uh, sed to basically just replace a bunch of text within my uh, Docker YAML file. And the text I'm replacing is tag by command false. And I'm just uncommenting that and making it true. Um, doing pretty much the same thing with collect container size, setting that to true. And collect all metrics, setting that to true. And again, uncommenting it. Uh, and making all those changes to the ddagent conf.ddocker.yaml uh, file. And that's what turned all of those extra features on, basically the 11 extra metrics that you probably won't see unless, of course, you've turned them on. So, so that is just a, you know, just a quick look at what metrics are available if you're using Docker. Um, and some of the different ways you could play around with them. Now, I've seen other dashboards where they do some really creative things with these metrics. And of course, once you've got the metrics and you've got the tags uh, associated with any um, containers, uh, you can do some really, really cool things. In fact, let's go just to make sure you see how my um, Datadog uh, agent is configured. I've gone in and changed the host name to something that's uh, more recognizable. And I've assigned it some tags. So demo nginx, uh, because uh, this particular thing is a demo and it's showing nginx and Docker. Uh, it's not showing Redis, so maybe I should get rid of that for now. And it's not actually showing Golang, so I'll set that to PHP because that's what is actually being shown. Um, it, the role, we often use roles inside of Datadog at, at the company. Um, and so this role is demo. And then I've got a demo platform uh, tag, and I will set this occasionally to uh, HP Helion or AWS or um, uh, Azure or DigitalOcean, depending on what I'm trying to say, or, or Fusion when I run on my local box. And uh, I don't think I have made any other changes. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, so... Um, that's a quick look at uh, all the metrics available for Docker and how to configure them. Again, my name is Matt Williams. I am the DevOps evangelist here at Datadog, and thanks so much for watching. Goodbye.